For a game about time travel, a beach is a weird thematic. Like all the other worlds are periods of time, but the beach is just a location. But after playing through this world, it makes sense. Big Wave Beach is set in a dystopian Atlas Shrug style future where everything sucks, all funds locked behind five pound microtransactions and all the zombies have tits. Now I know this is the world you're all looking forward to because you all want to see me suffer, but just make sure to inflate my e- I mean subscribe to get me ever so closer to that seductive play button. Day 1 as always sets the scene for my newest round of self-inflicted torture. It's wild to me that it took them this long to bring water back to the game. The pool stage is easily the most iconic map from the first game, largely thanks to the endless mode. So it's just weird to me that they waited so long. The water here is a lot more involved than in the pool level though, with a shifting tide that can fully board wipe if you're not careful. Similarly to the icy winds in Frostbite Cave, I really like this gimmick. Sure, it makes the game unbearably hard, but just like the tender sexual embrace of a woman, it just isn't fun if they don't punch you in the stomach several times. Upon completing that horrendous analogy, we unlock the lily pad. For literally months now, I've been asked whether or not I'll be using the lily pads in this world, since it's kind of impossible without them. But in a twist of rare pop cap good games design, we actually don't need to use the lily pads here, as we can place nuts on existing lily pads and then use the plant food on the nuts to create more lily pads. It's a real slurp juice on an ape situation. Not using lily pads makes this world much harder, which is very unnecessary, but that's kind of the fun we're having here if you think about it. Day 2 shows off how artificial the difficulty in the later worlds are. Even beyond the irritating unique zombies and the ball busting world gimmicks, these later levels just shit out more and tougher zombies. Can you imagine back when you can unlock worlds in any order, picking big wave beach after Egypt and bringing your bloomerang into day 2 of this world? Day 3 is a tutorial for the last plant in the entire game that needs a tutorial, the chomper. This fella has such a clear visual gameplay identity that someone who has just picked up the game would have no issue whatsoever guessing what he does, as long as they've paid the £5 entry fee to use those luscious green lips. Day 4 is really pushing the limits of how little variety they can get away with in these early levels. I beat this level with no difficulty, but let it be known that these peanuts are purely for display here and are contributing zero to beating these levels. If the game doesn't want to do anything with this level, I will. I have a VOD channel. I personally don't know why anyone would want to watch hours and hours of me struggling through the game, but Twitch chat loves it and I've had countless requests for a VOD channel, so there you go. Look, I'll be honest, I've branded it as a quick and lazy upload channel, but it actually takes like 12 hours to render and upload these videos. So uh, please go subscribe so I can get it monetized and justify it so it feels better. Cheers. Day 5 is a conveyor belt level which teaches us how to use the tangleweed, which is a super iconic plant from the first game. You can really feel how much of this world is balanced around using this guy. Being down a tangleweed is a real ball ache. Did you know that the last time I went to a beach I got stung by a jellyfish? I didn't do anything to him but he stung me and my foot really hurt. And if that wasn't heart wrenching enough, no cute girls came and peed on me. I fucking hate the beach. Day 6 introduces the snorkel zombie. Due to the close range nature of nuts, these guys are absolutely nothing. The snorkel zombie lost his t-shirt in the transition to the second game. God forbid a fellow wear some swag. Day 7's already bringing the safety line back way too far for us to use. I'm not sure what the point of a safe word is if we forget it 5 minutes in. It was this level that I had a real grim realisation. The gum nut doesn't work in water. It basically means we're down one of our two hyper carry nuts, which is disastrous for this world. With this news, I was crushed. This world might be impossible. Now this is peak plant vs zombies right here. I fucking adored walnut bowling in the first game, and seeing it reimagined here is so cool. Consider my spirits high and my glasses tinted rose. We can definitely beat this world, no sweat. Day 9's Big Wave Beach's other type of gimmick level. Stages with weirdly redundant objectives. It sounds stupid, but I'll point them out when they come up. They absolutely do this on purpose. In this one we have a mold colony, but they could have just moved the safety line back, and it's functionally the same thing. This one's the least bizarre because it does change how you can use lily pads, but it gets weirder. I love these levels, they're just quirky. Day 10's the level I've been most excited for since the very start of this game. It's the level we unlock the final nut for this challenge. If you thought the Primal Walnut was the last trick I had, you're a fool because I have one last surprise up my sleeve. The true silver bullet of this challenge. The bowling nuts. That's right dear shaggers, your eyes do not deceive you. My influence has become so potent I manifested peak plants vs zombies into one tangible plant. Now this guy's pretty fucking sweet, but I won't be spamming him on every level. Too much of a sweet thing and all of a sudden your piss smells like sugar puffs. Day 11 has a new player in the surfing zombie. Unlike other insta-kill zombies, this guy's a threat, as even though we can just blow him up with our exploding nuts, he kills the lily pad underneath the nut as well, and he leaves his surfboard despite being atomized on the spot. Other than that, this one was a sweep. Day 12, plan your defense. 
Looking back on the gameplay for this one really pisses me off because I only half spammed peanuts, saving 250 sun for Explodo Nuts, and I ended up digging up like three peanuts for more Explodo Nut funds. We beat the level first try, but at the cost of a sacred tradition. Day 13 is probably the hardest sun production level we've had yet, as we face three major challenges here. Producing 2000 sun, not exceeding 16 plants total, which sounds easy, but remember that includes lily pads, and the unwritten challenge of only starting with a single row of lily pads with no dry ground. This means we had to dig up sun nuts last seconds to replace them, which the sun nut really doesn't synergize with as it needs to regrow back to its former size. This took a couple of tries and I was about to give up on this one as I had lost all my lawnmowers until I remembered I can just stall out a single zombie indefinitely and then this level became pretty easy. Day 14 doesn't let us pick up plants, but it does give us access to the walnut bowling and the OG walnut. This level took a few tries since walnut bowling isn't that great. 200 sun with no sun producers is tight, but we got it down with the help of lawnmowers. The bowling nuts may be really expensive and not do that much damage, and be way more fragile than all the other nuts, but they do fill a very important role in our force. Their plant food effect is straight busted. In fact, it's only now that I've used this plant food I realise how lacklustre literally all of the nut plants food are. Except this one, that a holographic condom doesn't serve us in offence. Day 15 is the first brutally hard level of this world, and it's also our second entry in the weirdly redundant level list. It's a protection level, where we're tasked to guard a row of potato mines, which is almost identical to a flower line level, with just the very small detail of the most annoying hit detection you can imagine. The major difficulty from this level comes from the fact that we're not giving a single lily pad to work with. We start off by trying to use peanuts to clear chaff until the tide goes out, but if you know much about peanuts, that didn't work. And this level is unrelenting. When the tide goes out, it's manageable. The exploded nut can carry pretty easy. But it's towards the end of the level, when the tide wipes out the entire field and it pulls out the world's most annoying secret gimmick, a double final wave. This world has a horrible habit of chucking out a huge wave of zombies just before the final wave, forcing you to split your plant food between the two waves. The amount of times this move baited me into splooging all of my plant food just to be met with an even bigger wave is frankly embarrassing. After 3 hours of runs using lily pads, I was able to beat this level via an actual act of god which involved every single last zombie spontaneously combusting. But this was just a formality for Twitch chat, who didn't want to watch me repeat this level endlessly. I did go back and spend a further 3 hours running it back with the bowling nuts and zero lily pads, repeating the level over and over and over again until I got the perfect RNG on the bowling nuts. In total, I spent about 6 hours on this level which left me on my hands and knees begging that this is the longest level in this run, because I don't know if I can do this again. Day 16 is a conveyor belt level, which is lame and boring. Did you know that just after I finished the audio and script for this video, I lost all of the footage for Big Wave Beach, meaning I had to beat this world twice, on stream. So just know all of the bitching and moaning in this video, I had to go through twice. I'm such a fucking idiot. Going into day 17, I have a real bone to pick for my viewers. For months, I've had hundreds of comments saying that Big Wave Beach would be hard, but at least the infinite nullifies all the hard zombies. I've been told this over and over and over again, that the infinite plant food will carry me through this game. I thought that as long as I save my plant food for the infinite, the saviour of this run, I can handle the octo zombie no problem, like I've been told for months. And this is the day, his grand arrival. And does the infinite counter the octo daddy as was foretold? Does he fuck? He smothers my nuts and tentacles hentai style. Anyway, here's my potentially hot take about the Octo guy. Despite being much more tanky than the wizard zombies and the tentacle persisting after his death, I think the wizards were actually a much bigger deal than the Octo. The Octo daddy is individually stronger, but the game never sends that many at you, but the wizards were coming at you five at a time. That said, he will still be an absolute nightmare. Day 18 and holy shit, this guy's peak. Purely design wise, the Guacadar has to be a top 5 plant, there's no disputing it, this guy's cute as fuck. Day 19 only lets us pick 2 plants, but it does give us the sun nut. See, I could easily wipe this level with exploder nuts, it wouldn't be hard at all. But it hit me when I started playing this level, if it's giving me the sun nut, I think I'm going to use it just once. And with my newfound sun production, I amassed an armada of cannons. This level was some of the most pure, genuine fun I've had in this game. Using multiple rows of coconut cannons to beat it is so satisfying, I fucking love this level. In day 20, I took the bowling nuts for a spin. This level had me hanging on by a thread the entire time, but somehow I was able to beat it first try. I hate using this analogy for the 100th time this series, but this level actually had me edging with how close I was to fucking losing the entire time. And when this big ass wave that is not the final wave popped up, I thought it was over. 
but the bowling that plant food clutched up here. This thing is fucking insane. Day 21's a little flirt, making me think we're about to play Walnut Bowling again, but nah, it's a demo for the most wasted potential in this whole game. What was wrong with her? Why was she replaced by this imposter? She's charming. She was perfect. They Princess diana our darling and replaced her with this mingy testicle. When I started Day 22, chat started spamming, he's arrived, he's arrived, which got me really confused when a scrawny fisherman popped out. But no, chat wasn't lying. This guy's an agent of chaos. Truthfully, he wasn't too difficult to deal with right now, but as this world goes on, he just gets more and more annoying. What I dislike most about him is that he's just so deceptively tanky. Like, I don't know if that rubber ring he's wearing is made of Kevlar or is full of cement, but he should not be able to eat a coconut cannon low to the face. Day 23 makes us protect free cob cannon wannabes, but unlike the rip for her pleasure ass homing thistle, I do like these bananas, and they seem to be weaker than the cob cannon with the upside of taking up one less space. Plus, they're really cute. The fishermen here are brutal though, but I must admit, they are kind of a clever use of the world gimmick. It's about here that I realise that the infinite barrier is a necessity for the rest of this world. Day 24 is another round of the greatest game of our generation, Walnut Bowling, and this one was actually kind of hard, which is cool. I'm just gutted this isn't a mainstay of the entire game, I love this shit. Day 25 is the return of the definitive worst objective in the game, the kill X amount of zombies in X amount of time, it just rolls off the tongue like pubic hair. You start with lily pads in this one, but you have to sacrifice them to the fishermen. I started using peanuts, but they don't even dent the fishermen, so we switched up to the bowling nuts, and they do marginally better. The fishermen are more obnoxious than ever here, with a full five waves of them appearing. The infinite barrier holds them back, but this is far from foolproof. One unfortunately timed surfing zombie can one-shot the barrier, permanently killing the infinite. I did beat this level relatively quickly after a sick walnut bowling comeback. Yo, walnut bowling! Oh, never mind, these are just regular walnuts. That's really rude, actually. I almost cleared day 27 on my first attempt after an insane walnut bowling hole, but I got fucked over by a fisherman. It then took me a further two hours to beat this stage. Spending hours on a stage you almost cleared first time is depressing. The hardest part of this level is the lack of safety net, meaning it's hard to set up peanuts or bowling nuts. And we really need to protect the lily pads that were given. In the final attempt of this level, I lost most of my lawnmowers and lily pads milliseconds before a huge wave of surfers come, meaning I was shit out of luck, until I hit a godly bowling nut trick shot, ending this nightmare of a stage. Day 28. Possibly the hardest level in the entire game. I've been warned about this stage for months now, and it lives up to the hype. This level doesn't need much of an introduction, but neither does basically anything I explained, so here we go. This is the first stage in the entire game that I couldn't even clear the first wave. Let me just go over why we're so fucked here. Firstly, we can't afford any big guns, but that's always been the case here. Secondly, we can't spam the fuck out of Exploder Nuts. We can and must use a couple to clear big waves, but too many and we lose the game. Same thing goes for the Cumlet if we could even use him. The Infinite's a must on this level because of the Fisherman, but annoyingly, he actually permanently dies from the surface, so he does add to the kill count. And possibly the most annoying thing are these flimsy ass lily pads that we need to protect. But when the surfer penetrates us with a surfboard, it counts as killing two things because the lily pad counts as dying as well. All of this considered, we basically have to rely on the peanut, which is doomed. I really, really hate to say this, but this is the first level that's impossible without a little wiggle room. After much deliberation with chat, we come up with a few options. Firstly, leveling up some weaker plants. This is a pretty decent idea. The Walnut and Peanut aren't seeing any play these days, so it adds some much needed variety to the challenge. But we still have one more world to do, and I want to be able to beat the entire game only using level 1 plants. Using lily pads could take some pressure off the starting pads, but I don't think it's nearly enough to help. Chat suggested buying plant field or using power ups, but who do I look like to you guys? In the end, I just allowed myself to use sun nuts. With these, I was able to beat the level in about an hour using coconut cannons and infinites, but to be honest, I kind of regret the choice. I went back to beat the level using peanut spam, and some very minor not so important worth overlooking help from the enforcement. This plant is on a different level to the rest of the game, it's bonkers broken, but it does feel better to win this way since the peanuts got to do something for the first time since Egypt. I don't know how I should have beat this level, but when it comes time to put all these videos together for one final remastered nut video, I think I'll put some more hours in this level to find a better way to beat this stage, so subscribe to stick around for that. Day 29 is really weird. It's a plan your defense with really few lily pads and zero in the middle lane, but somehow it was just like really easy. I beat it using peanut spam. I can't really tell why it's easy, but that's mostly because my brain is fried from the last level. Day 30 and I can't fucking believe it, but this level is almost as bad as the last one. We have to protect a row of God's most precious creations, the guacadars. 
I almost put this level onto the category of weirdly redundant challenges. It's the same as the Potato Man level where they're basically just flower lines. But there is a major, major difference here. If a fisherman so much as hooks a crocodile, it's game over. The game design here honestly feels so hostile. This is, this is mean. I wish I had more to say about this one, but I beat it by repeating the level over and over and over again for about two hours so I could get the perfect RNG on the bowling that plant food, which is a tough one because I had to spend almost all the plant food keeping up the infinite barriers to permanently avoid the fisherman. I had what I thought was a genius idea to let the Octo Daddies tentacle fuck all the guacadals so they don't get set off by the fisherman, but they shoot way too slow and don't appear enough for it to really work. The back half of this world has been fucking agony. Day 31 is a boring level where you don't get to pick your plants. Fuck the homing thistle. The penultimate Zomboss is actually really cool. I love that you can clog its engines with Tangle Kelp and it has its own animation, that's really awesome. With Big Wave Beach down, that leaves only one more world remaining. Let me tell you, it's scary knowing the series is coming to an end. Making these videos has completely consumed my life for the last six months, and I've loved every second of it. I just hope I can keep up this growth after the nut challenge ends. In fact, just for you guys that stuck around to the end, here's a little teaser for what's coming up after this series. What's the best feeling after a nut? A good old piss. So please subscribe and stick around for the piss video that's coming out next. Lastly, I just wanted to shout out the bowling nut. I had a small independent game developer help me sort that out, so you can check out their work in the comment. Go show them some love. And I have credits to what I think is the original source for the bowling nuts, but content farms have made tracking down the original source for these things so hard. So if I do get 100% confirmation on a source, I will put that in the description. And lastly, thank you to my Patreons. Emerald Gaming 64, Don't Trust Bananas, Nooblet 67, Yaron Dragon of Rebirth, Encore, Zetal Filmoid, Ralph Animation, Nightmare Balloon Boy, Mr. Mutant, Augusto Varkir, Slendy 5K, and Glitch. That was actually one take. I'm very impressed with myself. As always, thank you very much for watching. Cheers.